I'm gonna talk to you today about larval fishes and some factors that might be affecting their density. I might start with a story. Every year since I've been here in Virginia, I go fishing from the pier using the same fishing rod and using the same type of bait. Some years were what I would call a good year of fishing. I will get a lot of croakers, some, some of them are pretty good size. I will say by the size of my food. But then other years, I will get only some croakers, few croakers, and most of them were only probably the size of my hand. And I always ask myself the same question. Where, um, what do my fishing catches vary that much if I'm using the same gear and if I'm using the same type of bait? Well, some years are good and others bad. But well, to answer this question, we need to take into account very complex processes and factors, so it's not an easy answer. And to learn more about it, my research is taking a look at one piece of this huge puzzle. I'm looking at the smallest fish, the larval fishes. The larval stages refers to the moment of embryos hatched from the egg and the moment before the transformation into juveniles. The larval stages are really important because they experience high rates of mortality. So they can influence the number of juveniles that will be later available to recruit to the adult populations. And therefore, the number of fish that will be available for the fishery on my fishing rod. Mm -hmm. Some data show the larval stages density, uh, the larval fishes density vary year to year. And this is an example of a plenty croaker on a larval fish densities in the York River. On the x-axis, we have the years from 2007 to 2014. And on the y-axis, we have the changes on the mean larva fish density. Uh, being density, the number of larva fish per cubic meter of water. One in the horizontal dotted line represents the overall average across all the years. As so you can tell in 20, uh, 2007, um, density were four times the overall average. But then since 2009, uh, larva fish density has been below that average. So what's going on here? What is driving these larva fish densities? And this is where my research comes into play. My research involves the collection of larva fishes in one fixed station located in the York River in the lower Chesapeake Bay. We also collect some environmental data such as temperature, salinity, and freshwater discharge. We count the number of species we collect in our, in our samples. And my research is particularly looking at five targeted species that include Atlantic Manhattan, Atlantic Croaker, and a spot. And now I'm taking a look at the annual variability of these five species <coughs> that I'm considering. So here I'm representing the larva fish density data that we already have. So to this data, I'm incorporating data or changes on temperature, salinity, and freshwater discharge into a statistical model. So now I can better understand what are, how are these factors affecting the larval fish density. And this is really important because these environmental factors might be influencing how many larval fish will survive and therefore, therefore how many juvenile will be available again to recruit to the adult populations. So my research um, is trying to determine what is driving the lar these larval fish densities in the York River system. So we can give insight uh, to other fisheries manage management about the role of the larval stages and how they might be affecting the number of recruits that will be available later. But my research is only part of a bigger picture, of a bigger goal. And that goal is understanding where the larval fish density affects the adults that will be available for the fishery. Or your friend then. Mm -hmm. 